I'm Jamie from Guitarist and today we've got a really cool amp from PRS to show you. Now a few years ago PRS brought out HDRX, uh, their HDRX amplifier which was based on a super lead, a Marshall super lead head that purportedly was used by Hendrix at Woodstock. They turned it into um, a high-end high amp um, produced by the Core Line production facility in Maryland and um, it was a very cool thing. Not everyone could afford it though because uh, it was um, a, a premium amplifier. Now they've brought out what we have here today which is the HDRX20. It's made in Indonesia much like uh, PRS's SE line of electrics and uh, really this is a, a smaller in wattage version of those um, core line HDRX heads. So think of this as a, uh, a kind of mini plexi um, made by PRS in Indonesia and uh, we're going to walk you through some of the details today and show you how it sounds. Okay so the best way to think of this amp is as um, like a sort of mini plexi if you like. Um, in the past you could use a little jumper lead to um, join the two channels um, of, the, of a Marshall plexi together to kind of get uh, a best of both worlds sound. This kind of includes that jumper lead uh, connection between the two channels as default inside the amp but it gives you control over the volume of the two sides if you like the treble side and the bass side here. So these two dials here, the these two knobs let you um, dial in the precise amount of each channel that you want to hear because it's there are two channels running in parallel. Aside from that you have a global three band EQ here and to set the overall level you have a master volume. So if you like you kind of set the blend you want with these uh, the, the, the channel controls, the volume controls for each channel, treble and bass, get the blend you want, use the master volume to set the overall level and then you can use this global EQ to sort of fine tune things further. However that's not where the story stops because as a lot of people who've used plexis uh, know getting that treble right in the Goldilocks sweet spot is the most important thing because it can be quite savage and PRS have cleverly given us um, two more extra tools to kind of dial in that really sweet rich uh, tone that you would want from a, a plexi style amp. The first is this upper mid boost switch here which operates a little bit like a treble booster would have done you know in the six, late 60s. It's a bit of a misnomer treble, treble booster because really what you're doing is lifting some of those upper mids to get that, that sweet cutting but um, warm uh, lead tone so that gives you a little bit of a lift in upper mids and this is a straight bright switch here so if you're not getting enough treble maybe you're using some quite dark humbuckers again you can use this to just take things into that really um, sharp edged uh, plexi style sound. So um, let's show you some of the how some of those things sound. I am actually going to um, show it to you completely dry this amp doesn't come with reverb but we have got on the floor here um, a J Rocket uh, Univerb which is a combination of a Univibe style uh, phaser and, uh, and a reverb. We've got it running into the front end of the amp not into the effects loop so that you will hear the reverb going through the front of this amp. Um, I'll switch it on as we go through I'll show you it dry, the dry sounds and then with a little bit of reverb so you can hear, hear it in context. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you this upper mid switch in action and then we'll show you the bright switch and then we'll have a little play around with using those channel volumes. So here it is completely dry um, with the treble and the bass set about the same level and the master volume on two. So a little bit of reverb. Is that upper mid boost switch being engaged. Okay and I'm just going to take the reverb away there so you can hear it completely without anything else um, driving it. This is with the um, upper mid switch off, here's with it on. It just puts a little bit of hair on it, it's got that, that nice aggressive late 60s kind of uh, sawtooth edge to it there. So let's switch that off there. Now I'm going to show you um, the effect of the bright switch. So here's it with the bright switch off and no reverb. And 
here's that bright switch. <laughs> Chuck a bit of reverb on there so you can hear that in context. Here's the bright switch off. And then I engage it if I want more cut. Okay, so um, let's switch those two, um, the bright and the upper mid switch off there. And we'll play a little bit around with the channel volume here so you can hear how those uh, interactive parallel um, channels um, affect each other. I'm going to raise the treble channel a bit. That's all almost uh, at three o'clock there. If I raise the bass um, channel volume up to the same sort of level, we'll get an overall lift in, in gain and volume. Much thicker, you might find that uh, it's a little bit uh, swampier. Now if I take that down again to where it uh, was approximately and this one down, this time I'm gonna turn the bass up alone to about the sort of three o'clock level. Let's go a little bit further. So again, you've got a lot of push in the bass there that's helped by the closed back cab. Some of those early Fleetwood Mac sounds um, to a certain extent, some of the sort of blues breakery sounds, quite savage, but still with that, that big cushion of bass push underneath them. And you can control all that with these two um, channel controls here. Um, it's quite a subtle thing. It's not like flipping between channels. It's, um, it's more of a sort of blending thing. And um, uh, personally, I think it's really great. You can use it to dial in um, the sound to suit different guitars, different applications. Um, it's quite a cool feature. And it certainly updates the whole Plexi concept quite nicely. Um, let's have a quick chat about internals. It's a 20 watt amp. It uses Tungsol 5881 power valves uh, instead of EL34s. Uh, they're kind of like, you can think of them as like a sort of higher power version of 6L6s that are a little bit different in character. Marshall used them for a bit when 6L6s, sorry, EL34s became scarce in the 90s. Um, it's got uh, ECC83 valves or a high performance version of that um, called the ECC83S. Uh, and they are um, kind of like a high performance um, preamp valve. So again, it's got that Paul Reed Smith attention to um, making things just a little bit higher end, a little bit more boutique, a little bit more dialed in. Um, really like this package. It's um, nice and robust. It uh, retails for not much more than £700. So, um, you know, you're getting all of that kind of boutique design packed into an Indonesian made package that uh, is not uh, massively expensive. It, the cabinet um, is, is a separate um, buy from the head, you don't get them together. But together you're going to have a fair bit of change short of um, two grand if you buy them all together. So um, this is a really good value way to get into a modded plexi uh, sound that PRSA is based directly on one of Hendrix's most famous amps. So um, we'll give you a little bit more, a few more sounds to play you out with and we hope you've enjoyed checking out this um, interesting new amp from PRS. Thank <laughs> you.